Hello everyone and welcome to this quick guide on Mudbox and what we're going to do today is go through some very basic concepts of how to use Mudbox and um, how to get started with the program. I'm going to demystify a few things like the sculpt layers and the paint layers. I'm also going to go through some of the sculpt tools and the paint tools and teach you how they work. Um, and I'm also going to go through how the stamp, the stencil, and fall off all work together in order to affect your sculpt tools and your paint tools. So it's going to be um, very, very simplistic um, overview, but we are going to get through a lot of the um, more questionable parts of how to use Mudbox and how to use it efficiently. So um, I hope you enjoy and um, yeah, let's get started. So when you first start up Mudbox, you will get this little welcome uh, panel. And this welcome panel allows you to do a couple basic different things. Okay, the first thing it'll, the, the most useful thing once you're kind of using this program for a while is going to be the uh, recent files menu. Um, it's really nice that this pops up. So if like you're like me and you don't normally finish a project in one sitting, um, it's nice that you can come right back to the project you were working on. Um, you can even save revisions and see the, the revisions right in line here. And um, so it's just a very useful way to get started with your files. Uh, you can always just do a normal open from here, um, but you don't need this menu for any of this. It's all up in this file menu, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but yeah, so you do have this option. I actually leave it open just so that I have the uh, you know, the, the recent files menu here. And also I find that I'm often starting with some sort of a, a primitive. Um, so these are basic primitives to begin with. Um, and we're actually going to start with this cube one, uh, but not quite yet. All right. So the other thing you can notice is that there are some really good tutorials on how to get started with Mudbox uh, right in here. So um, don't be afraid to kind of explore here if you're very new and you want to kind of learn your way around. Um, one thing that I would highly recommend is picking up a tablet for this program. Um, if you don't have one, it's okay. It works beautifully with without a tablet. But if you have a tablet, you can you can really open up what can be done with Mudbox. Um, it becomes much more natural once you have a tablet in hand, um, and it really really works well. Um, another thing that a lot of people are starting to do is use the multi-touch with uh, touch screens, and that can be a very nice way to work as well. Um, I happen to have a tablet, so that's how I'm going to be working for most of this tutorial. Um, but if you have a mouse, you can you can follow along just as easily. All right. So, uh, so that's that. So let's get started by clicking on the cube, okay? And that'll bring us right into a new document with this cube loaded. All right, so let's do that. Let's hit our cube, and there we go. Okay, so in order to get started, the first thing you're going to need to know is how to navigate the interface itself. Um, so you can actually move your object around and uh, change your view of the object. Because to sculpt something, you really have to be able to navigate the object itself. So Mudbox makes it pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and what you're basically going to do to move is use the Alt key. Okay, so anytime you're holding down the Alt key, you're basically saying, I want to move the camera's view. Okay, so Alt is camera view, and left click will allow you to rotate the object. Okay, so Alt and left click gives you this movement. To, um, to zoom in and out, you can use the scroll wheel. Okay, to pan your view, you're going to go ahead and hit Alt and middle mouse button and move the object around like so. Okay, The right mouse button will allow you to zoom again, so you can use either the scroll wheel or you can hold down Alt and right click for zoom. Okay, So again, Alt left click is rotate, Alt middle click is pan, Alt right click is zoom. Okay, And you can always reiterate the zoom with the mouse wheel. Okay, So you have those navigation options in front of you. Okay, so now that we've got the movement kind of taken care of, uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is learn how to kind of begin sculpting. All right, so let's do that now. So down here you're going to notice that you have a whole panel full of different tools, okay, and all of these are 
sculpture tools. Okay, so they each do their own unique type of kind of action. Okay, um, so let's start with a sculpt brush, and let's just kind of paint in some stuff. All right, so there we go. Now there are properties to this brush that you're going to want to know about. Those properties are all held in this little panel over here on the right. Okay, and once you click whatever you click, you'll see that you get the options for that object here. If I were to click on a stencil, I would get the options for a stencil in here, or um, I'm sorry, a stamp. If I were to, I'm going to actually turn that off. So I'm going to go off, and then I can go stencil. And if I were to click a stencil, we would get the options for the stencil. If I were to go into fall off and click a fall off, I would get the options for the fall off down here. Okay, so basically. Um, this is your property panel for whatever it is that you're going to be controlling. In our case, what we want is um, to simply make sure everything is off for now. And we're going to go ahead and grab our sculpt. And we're just going to start playing around with some simple things like the size and the strength. Okay, Because those are the two things you want to normalize right from the start. Um, and mind you that these are very relative to each other. So a strength of 6.9 may not be a lot for a brush of size 100, right? So as you can see, it doesn't seem like much, right? It's just barely moving our object a little bit, right? But if I were to go ahead and use that same, um, same 6.9 uh, strength with a very small brush, you'll notice that it's actually a very strong, um, it's, it's strong, okay? So just something to keep in mind, you just want to kind of um, adjust your strength and your size uh, relatively all the time. So you're going to be doing that a lot. And because of that, there are two really important key commands that you're going to absolutely have to know. Um, it will save you so much time. Going to these sliders is impossible at best when you're really working in this program. So um, get very used to hitting B and click dragging. That will increase and decrease your brush size. So again, B, left click, and you can now adjust your brush size by moving your mouse uh, up and down, okay? And you can do the exact same thing with the M button for the strength. So M, up and down, and left click will allow you to adjust the strength, okay? So these are very useful when you're trying to work rapidly that you're not always kind of looking through this menu and now you select something else and you can't find the strength, forget that. So um, just use B for brush size and M for strength and you're going to be in great shape. Now you can very easily adjust your stroke and your sizes right on the fly, right in your window and you don't have to worry about a thing. All right. So don't, don't use these, break yourself of the habit right away um, and start using B and M on your keyboard for managing those two uh, details. All right, so again, I'm just going to undo everything and get us back to the cube. So before experimenting any further with the sculpt tools, what I'd like to show you is how Mudbox deals with subdivision layers. Because what's happening right now is as we sculpt, what we're really doing is working with very few polygons. And because of that, we're getting these kind of blocky, edgy shapes. Now, the beauty of Mudbox is that you can go ahead and increase resolution of your polygon structure um, at the click of a button. And each time you do so, you will get what's called a level created, okay? Um, the lowest level is what's called the base mesh, and the highest level is whatever your highest level is. And you can increase these levels um, pretty much indefinitely until your computer basically can't handle the polygons anymore. Um, so it's very relative on your video card, how many layers of subdivision you can go and at what point it becomes unnecessary anymore. So uh, normally you won't have that issue, but theoretically you could just cre keep increasing poly count um, indefinitely. And to do so, you just hit Shift and D. So let me get back to my base mesh. And what I'm going to do is hit Shift and D. Okay. Now you'll notice it just says up here, Level 5 New. Now the reason it says Level 5 is because we started with a primitive in Mudbox. So if we were to um, 
look at the base mesh, it would actually be far fewer polygons. But because this object was a primitive from Mudbox, it actually already had subdivision layers added to it. So to navigate your subdivision layers, what you're going to do is use page up and page down on your keyboard. So if you were to go page up, it would say we're at the highest level. Okay, We can't go any higher because we haven't created a higher level yet. But if we hit down, okay, page down, you'll notice that we've actually gone down in levels. To really see this, what we can do is we can go display and we can go wireframe. Okay, so now we can actually see our wireframe. So if I hit page up, you'll see that the mesh increases. If I hit page down, the mesh decreases and decreases and decreases until finally we get to the base level mesh, right? So this is level one, okay? And again, if you were to have imported an object from another program like Maya or Max, um, you know, this would be about what you would be importing, okay? So this would be your base level mesh. And because, again, we're working with an object that was pre-built in Mudbox as a primitive, okay, it already had four layers of subdivision added, okay? So let's go up to that, one, two, three, and four. And, I'm sorry, there's four. And that's where it started at. We hit Shift-D once, which created this highest level. And we can hit Shift-D again, if we'd like, and increase it even more. So now you can see we've added level six. We could hit Shift-D one more time, and now we're at level seven. But now notice how our poly count is getting ridiculous, 39,000 polygons, okay? Not that that's too much, um, but just realize that we're really increasing poly count, okay? So now if we were to come after this with our sculpt brush, you'll notice that we get much more smooth, even quality uh, strokes, okay? That said, however, don't start at a high level. Start at a low level. Build in your basic structure first, then move up in levels as necessary, okay? So save your, your detail work for up at the high levels, do your basic modeling at the low levels, and kind of refine as you go up. That's something I would have to recommend because that is how you kind of really want to work with this tool, okay? It likes to work from low to high. So start with broad brush strokes and increase your quality and increase your refinement as you go, all right? So uh, that's just a word to the wise. You can do whatever you find necessary. Um, many people do just start right away with a high level and just start sculpting in here. I really don't recommend it. Um, it makes it harder to go backwards. It makes it harder to fix things. Um, and it can just be a big pain in the butt, all right? So uh, again, start low, move high. Okay. That said, let's go back to our cube again, and let's move down to our level four. Okay, and there we are. Okay, so now we're basically at our, our uh, starting mesh again. We have a couple levels created above it, but that's not going to matter too much right now. Um, let's just imagine that this is a brand new object and we're just starting fresh. Okay, so our natural reaction again would be to start sculpting right away. Um, that is something again I want to try to curb you from doing. Okay, the first thing you should do when you're getting ready to sculpt and you're actually going to begin starting to put sculpt lines down onto your object is to create a layer for sculpting. Okay, So over here you'll notice we have the sculptor layer um, set up. We also have a paint layer, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to worry about our sculpting. Okay, So what we can do in here is we can go right click and go new layer. Okay, And by doing so, what we've actually done is created a layer that is going to be applicable to layer uh, to level four. So if I were to start coming in here and sculpting now, you'll notice that if I turn this sculptor layer off, we can actually get rid of all of the, the, the changes that we've made in that sculptor layer just by clicking a button. Okay, So that can be very easy. We can also right click and delete that layer and get rid of it completely. So now we're back to our base mesh again. I don't really have to explain why that's useful, but um, but it is, obviously, because we can just get rid of stuff if we make a mistake, if we do something we don't like, or um, we can use it for layering things. Um, it's, it's 
very useful, and it's something that we wouldn't be able to do if we had just sculpted directly on the base mesh, because then it would be permanent and we wouldn't be able to get rid of it, okay? So again, always work in sculpt layers, and you will need to do this for every time you create a new subdivision layer, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go right-click New Layer, and I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. So let's say I wanted to start sculpting in my, my basic um, shape here, right? Now, I don't know what it's going to be. I'm just kind of goofing around, right? So I sculpted that in. Now, if I were to go ahead and move up to our level 5, okay, by hitting page up, you'll notice that this sculpture layer is now locked, okay? So basically, this sculpture layer is dependent on being on level 4. So if I were to go back down to level 4, I now have access to that sculpture layer. If I were to go up a layer, I would have to create a new sculpture layer. So I'm going to go ahead and go right-click and go New Layer, and now I can sculpt more details in, okay? So I can start... Um, coming in here with something like the scrape brush maybe and start scraping away some details okay and now what I'm doing is I'm literally creating layered uh, effects okay so if I were to turn off level 4 we would see that the sc scrape tool actually takes place on our base mesh okay and is is not being um, you know is not affecting the the changes that we made in level 4. But if I turn level 4 back on, they take place again, right? I could also just turn off the scrape layer, and we now see that those scrapes have been taken out, okay? So that is um, really important, okay, to make use of. Another very important thing about the, um, the, the sculpture layers is if you go into the erase tool, it'll actually function, okay? So this... Um, this tool will not, see I can erase out the scrapes, or if I were to go down to the sculpture layer, right, and move down, I can now erase the, um, the original buildup that I had created as well, all right? This would not be the case should I have worked directly on the base mesh. So let's go ahead and delete our sculpture layers just so I can show you what the case would be. Um, delete, delete, and so now effectively I am working with no layers and I'm going to go ahead and grab my sculpt brush again and I'm going to go ahead and sculpt and now when I go to use my erase brush you'll notice that absolutely nothing happens, okay? The erase brush must work off of a layer and it erases to the original base mesh, okay? So that's really important and um, it's one of the main reasons why you absolutely should be always working in layers, okay? I don't want to belabor it too much about the layers but they're really important and you'll notice that every time I create a subdivision level I automatically create a layer. Okay, so we're starting here with a, a brand new fresh scene, and I've just got the cube loaded, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit Shift D until I get to about level 8, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right click, and I'm going to go New Layer, and we'll just go Test, right? So Test Layer. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to kind of test our brushes out. All right, and the first thing we're going to experiment with is the fall off. Okay, so what fall off is is kind of like the way that the edge of the brush will fall off. Okay, so let's just grab our sculpt brush and let's just leave it with the default, and let's go ahead and make a stroke. Okay, so as you can see, what you're getting is a very soft fall off. Okay, and it kind of falls off like so. It's like a dome, right? And if you look at this shape, it's kind of like a dome right? And it applies on both sides of the uh, shape, on the side of the brush, right? So we have different choices. We can grab this one that's more like a spine, and we'll see that it is very different, okay? Now it's much more like this shape, right? It's kind of shaping inward, okay? And the more drastic you get like that, the more it'll look like a shark fin kind of thing and you'll see that each one of them is different. So as you can imagine, these are very useful for the shape and definition of the general shape of your brush. Another useful thing to, uh, to kind of utilize sometimes is these panels over here on the right. Okay, so here you have your fall off reiterated in your brush itself. So here you can actually very manually control how that fall off is going to look. So you can even create your own drastic shapes, things like so, and see how they work. You know, see what they do, see how they function.
Um, normally you're going to want to keep with these basics, but you can get some pretty cool things out of it if you, uh, if you just experiment enough. Um, you can get some really cool shapes actually. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind that you can play um, with the shape of the uh, fall off right in here, right in this little panel over here. Um, another thing you can do is turn on something called Steady Stroke. Um, what Steady Stroke will do is it'll allow you to go ahead and get a much more controlled interface for managing smooth shapes. Okay, that was actually a pretty poor job of it. Um, let me try that one more time. So you could actually, add, you know what it is, I have this, this stroke spacing set too long, so I'm just going to set that down to something like 5, and now I should have an easier time making these tighter turns. All right, so as you can see, you can really smoothly create these shapes. Great for things like putting seams into clothing or all sorts of different things. Yes, steady stroke is, is a godsend, especially if you don't have a, a tablet. With the, with the mouse, this can make the mouse very usable and very easy to get very accurate shapes drawn, okay? So, so that's just something to consider also. So steady stroke is fantastic, and you should use it a lot. In here also, you're going to start noticing that we have the stamp image. So what stamp images are, let's get back to a clean surface, and um, let's go ahead and play with our stamps, okay? So let's do that now. Let's turn on stamp, and let's turn off steady stroke for now, okay? So what this is going to allow us to do is use a stamp in conjunction with our sculpt brush. So stamps are also noted right over here, and these are all the different stamps you have. You can also load new stamps by going add stamp, and pretty much any graphic image can go ahead and be used as a stamp. Um, you want to kind of carefully create them, but for all intents and purposes you can load any image you want. And let's just draw a stroke. All right, so that's a stroke with a sculpt brush with nothing applied to it. Now let's turn on a stamp image. Okay, let's grab this one. And again, you're going to see in these properties you have a couple things to choose from. You can randomize it, which means that it's going to randomize rotation, it's going to randomize left to right, it's going to randomize up and down, and it's going to randomize scale, and it's even going to randomize the, uh, the strength of it. Okay, so these are all the different things that you can control in randomization. So right now we're just going to use the defaults and go ahead and lay down a stroke. And as you can see, it's vastly different from what we got without a stamp image. So in general, what you want to kind of consider this as is at your lower levels, you'll want to use a sculpt brush that doesn't have textures applied. Okay, but as you get to your finer and finer detail levels, you'll want to start using things like stamps and stencils, which we're going to get into next. But yeah, so you can use these stamps in all sorts of different ways, and every stamp will give you a different result. Um, a lot of times they end up looking similar, like these two do, but if you look around the edges, they're vastly different, right? Um, and you can also do things like, I'm just going to undo those, and I'm just going to turn off the randomization function. And now you can get these kind of really nice scraped effects, okay? And again, that's from a stamp image being applied to it. So what it's doing is it's basically dragging this thing um, always in alignment to it. So this is the alignment. So if you turn off that alignment and now drag it again, you'll see that it's not quite the same effect. Um, still possibly very useful, but um, but not the same effect. So make sure you, uh, you you toggle this back on and off and figure out how that works for your or it doesn't work for you. All these types of things, stamps, stencils, and fall off, all are kind of relative to many of the tools in here. So play with lots of them. It doesn't only relate to the sculpt brush. You know, if I were to come in here with the um, with the scrape brush, for example, and turn on a stencil, it's going to scrape it with the stencil now. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry, with the stamp. So, so do be aware that all these tools are in conjunction with these things. They're not, this is not just like the stamp tool. It's used in conjunction with your sculpt brush, with your scrape brush, with your wax brush, etc., etc. Okay, so that's stamps. All right, the next thing we're going to deal with is stencils. Okay, so let's undo our stamps and let's get back to a plain wall again and let's break out a stencil. So 
So these guys are very special, and they are going to be um, very much for doing your textural type work. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and grab a stencil. I just grabbed this first kind of scratchy gray one, and I'm just going to go ahead and sculpt right onto it. Now, it's important to make sure your stamp is off while you're testing because you don't want them both to lay on top of each other. And yes, the stamp and the stencil can be applied simultaneously. Um, but right now, what we're going to do is make sure that the stamp is off and the stencil is on. Okay, now that that's all set, all you're going to want to do is just kind of make sure your your strength is set to a, a level that's going to work. So at times it'll feel like it's just way too heavy, like this to me feels way too heavy. So what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust our strength right on the fly. Now again, if you have a, uh, a tablet, this is even better because the, the pressure sensitivity is read um, as pressure on the uh, pencil itself. So when um, you press hard, it'll, it'll increase the strength by default. Um, and as you release, it'll it'll take the strength off by default. But as you can see, even with a mouse, I was able to create this very believable um, concrete surface very rapidly, you know. And um, that's just from this uh, from using a stencil. Okay, so you can see the power of a stencil right there. Um, very rapid, easy textural. Um, management, you know, and I'm just going to undo that. And what we could do is, you know, even do something like, let's say I was doing something like scales or uh, this is a texture I often use. Um, it's just kind of like a mucky kind of green, um, kind of like, a, I don't know, you'll see. So what I would do is I would just increase my brush size and kind of run over it and then when used in conjunction with a paint layer, right, which we're going to get into next, um, we can just paint that paint right over the top and in fact I'll just show you how it would work. So by using projection and we're going to get into the paint layers but I'm just giving you a quick sh quick uh, tease here um, and we'll just go into the projection and now I can literally paint, oops, I've got a stamp applied, sorry, and I still have a color applied and now I can paint those colors right into there and you can very rapidly have extremely detailed wall surfaces in 3D you know complete with bump and everything and just make it amazing really fast you know just really fast so uh, so yeah so that's the power of, of a stencil okay so that's what stencils can do for us Okay, so now we're going to enter the world of the paint layers. And very similar to the sculpt layers, we have paint layers. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new paint layer and we're just going to leave it in the diffuse channel. Okay, and hit OK. And now in here, all you can do is just simply paint. Okay, you have all the same types of things with stamps and stencils and fall off um, that apply to your brushes just the same exact way. So exactly how you would sculpt um, is exactly how you're going to go ahead and paint. So if you turn off your stamps and make sure your color is set and kind of grab your paintbrush, you're going to now get that type of a result um, just like your sculpture tool would have done. Um, and again, these all apply so you can see that this is giving us that sharp fall off. This is going to give us that kind of, um, you know, very bright in the middle and fading very rapidly off a very soft uh, fall off. And we have our bump that's kind of similar to our square, but not quite as square, right? Um, there we go. So as you can see, all the fall off stuff still apply. The stencil still applies. If we grab a stencil and paint, you'll see that the stencil follows through just the same way that it did with the uh, sculpture brushes. And that's really what makes the beauty of mud box is that once you figure out a couple of the very simple basics, you're going to be off and running because everything follows the same suit. So just the same way that the sculpture tools work are exactly the same way uh, that the paint tool works. And it makes it very easy and comfortable to get... Um, 
you know, just very fluid with the program. You won't, you won't take a long time to get comfortable with this type of work. Um, it's, it's very painterly. So, uh, so yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy this part. So as you can see, that's what the paintbrush will do. Um, the projection will actually paint the color of the projection in there. And again, I'm using a stamp image. So it'll actually paint whatever color is in the projection. It'll literally project that color into the into it. So as you can see here, it's blonde hair. Um, if I were to grab this, it would be painted that color. So as you can see, that's very different um, than, I'm just going to delete this layer. Actually, I'm just going to clear the contents of this layer. Clear selected. So if I were to do that again with a paintbrush, we would get the color, but no, um, you know, the color that we select but not um, the color from the photograph itself. So that's the main differences between paintbrush and projection. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Airbrush is going to act like an airbrush. You know, pencil is going to act like a pencil. Okay, so now we're on the last kind of phase of figuring out what the paint tool can do for us. Um, what we're going to do is just kind of create a couple layers and see what they do. So right click in here and let's go new layer. And I started a new document. So if you have a layer created, that's okay. Just uh, clear it and, um, you know, get started again. And what you can do now is just kind of paint in here. And what I want to show you is how in this menu system, we can get a lot of the same effects that we would get out of something like Photoshop, but we can do it right here on our object while painting in Mudbox, which is really fantastic. Okay, so um, so all I've done is I've put down like a base color. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go new layer again, and once I do that, now I can take out um, I don't know the uh, the airbrush, let's say, and let's grab a different color. Let's grab like a dark gray, and let's paint that in there, and just kind of fill in some color. And I'm just going to increase my strength, and I'm not really doing anything in specific. I just want to kind of show you some ideas. Um, so now that I've got these two colors overlaying each other, I might want to be able to adjust the opacity of the top layer. So what I could do is I could go right here with this plus sign and just drag it down and I can adjust that opacity right on top of itself. Okay, so now I've got this um, this working as in conjunction with the layer below it rather than just overwriting it. Alright, so we can also go multiply and do a multiplication of the two colors. Um, in addition, we can go color burn or any number of these different methods to look through the top layer into the layer below it. Okay, And all of them are useful at different times. So do experiment there. And it's just like Photoshop. So if you're used to Photoshop, this will be nothing that you haven't seen before. Um, but it's pretty awesome that it exists right here in your sculpting program and you can do it right on an object surface so that's fantastic all right so in addition to layering what we can also do is go new layer and in the channels we can actually select special channels that are specific to 3d so we can go ahead and grab our specular channel and go OK and now what we're doing is we're actually painting into the surface but we're not actually painting a color we're painting a reflectivity, right? Or a specularity, technically. Okay? And if I were to grab, I'm just going to grab a normal paintbrush this time and paint in there. And you can really see it then um, when it's high, in a, a very high opacity. Uh, you can see just how that specularity layer works. But in addition to the specularity, you have many others. Okay? You've got. Um, gloss, incandescence for glow, um, you've got opacity for being able to see through things, you've got vector displacement maps for getting very, very accurate uh, displacement surfaces, you've got a bump map for um, pretty much very easily sculpting in high level detail that doesn't require a, hot, a lot of polygons. Um, you should really experiment with that and, and play with that because that's really, really powerful. And once you create a bump map, you can just convert it straight down to your normal map. And normal maps are used for video games and um, for, for optimizing models. So you can use normal maps for doing all sorts of detail surfaces where you don't want to have so many polygons. Both bump and normal are very similar to each other. Normal is just a little bit of a better um, methodology and and it just works um, more for video games and it, it, it can show the 
true deformation of the surface um, in a 2D flat surface, so normal maps are fantastic. Um, if you don't understand what a normal map is, don't worry about it. Um, just just get to know the program first, then worry about normal maps when you actually have a need for them. And reflection masks are for um, controlling whether or not an, a surface is reflective. Okay, So you've got all sorts of channels to play with in here, and um, so it's just like Photoshop, only it's got a lot more to it, okay? So play with these things and uh, see what they do for you. Okay, so you've kind of gotten the, the basic gist of uh, Mudbox at this point. So you kind of know how to do the basics. So now it's just up to you to start experimenting. Um, definitely play with some of these other uh, base primitives and see what you can kind of come up with. And at the beginning, just start playing around and, you know, as I say, pushing the mud around and uh, starting to figure out how the tool works. Um, but this, this tutorial should have given you a good basic understanding of uh, how to get started. So I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, do go ahead and comment um, if you found anything uh, especially useful or especially troubling. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely uh, just, you know, comment in the comment section and like it if you like it. All right? So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Later on, guys. Bye-bye.